Hello everyone and welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please remember that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here with us at St. Paul United Church of Christ in Wapakoneta, Ohio. I want to give just a few announcements and some prayer requests for today. I wanted to give all of you an update on our summer lunch program, which is in full swing. We are feeding lots of kids and a number of adults as well. Um, just to give you an idea of the scope of that ministry, on a weekly basis, we are now serving 1,350 meals each week. Each week. And 78% of those meals are going to children here in our community. So thank you all of you who are supporting that ministry in so many different ways. I want to ask for your continued prayers for our Welcome Home Committee and for the work that that committee is doing as we continue to look toward meeting again in person for worship. Know that we are taking time to figure out our technology so that we can continue to keep people engaged who either cannot or choose not to come back in person right away. And so it's taking some time and we thank you for your patience and your understanding as we look at how to meet together safely and still keep those folks at home engaged in worship. So please continue to pray for that committee and for church council as it looks forward to making some final decisions. I would ask additional prayers for Tim Kinsel, who is now at the Acres in Wapakoneta. Please keep Tim and Laura in your prayers. Also continued prayers for Bill Baker, who as we're filming this on Tuesday evening is still at St. Rita's Hospital. Um, but we do expect that Bill will be released to a nursing facility sometime later this week, probably before you see this service. We had announced that he was looking ahead to some surgery. They have decided not to do that surgery, that he is not strong enough uh, for that surgery. So please continue to keep Bill and his wife Linda and their family in your prayers. I would also ask for prayers for the family and friends of Cindy Chadwick, who passed away on Sunday, June 21st. It's likely that there will be a memorial service sometime um, later this coming week. Uh, so please keep all of those folks in your prayers, as well as all of those who are on our regular prayer list. The peace of Christ be with you. Thank mm -hmm. you.
begin our time together, our thoughts turn toward God. We have been led to this mountaintop of worship. We come trusting in God's steadfast love. We gather from near and far, seeking the way of salvation and peace. God has made an everlasting covenant with us. Let us proclaim God's faithfulness to all generations. Sometimes it is tempting to think God has forgotten us. Often we do not understand what God expects of us. God deals bountifully with us in much that we take for granted. God shows us the value of life and helps us celebrate it. We bring all of ourselves, our hope, our pain, our sorrow, and our joy, as we worship today, trusting that God will provide what we need to grow in Christ. Our hymn is God of our life. vision for us is generous and compassionate, and whose will for us is total commitment in love of you, of neighbor, and of self. Keep us from withholding any part of ourselves from obedience and loyalty to you, so we may be free to show genuine love to all people. Meet us here in our worship and strengthen us for your service. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 14. Listen and hear the word of God. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, 
and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son, Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had showed him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mountain of the Lord, it shall be provided. This is God's word given for us and for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today almost immediately follows the one from last week where we talked about Abraham sending his son Ishmael out into the wilderness with his mother Hagar. And today we find Abraham once again being asked to perhaps give up a son. This story is really focused on sacrifice theology, which in order to understand the Hebrew Bible, we have to look at that kind of theology. It really is central to the Hebrew scriptures and to how the early Hebrews understood themselves and how to obtain righteousness through our God. A lot has changed in the Jewish faith since that time. But when we read the Hebrew scriptures, much of the Old Testament is concerned with making these sacrifices, making the sacrifices that um, are needed to, uh, to deal with the sin of God's people. And usually those were animal sacrifices, although there were other kinds as well. There were sacrifices of, of drink or of grain, but many of the sacrifices that were considered the most holy were animals that were sacrificed. We find that in order to understand this particular story, we also have to understand what was going on in the cultures around the Hebrew people. We know from scripture that the Jewish people were transplants, right? They came from somewhere else. 
And they entered the land of Canaan and it became their own. That land, that promised land that God had set aside for the people of God. But those other cultures around them, of course, worshipped other gods and had different kinds of sacrifices. One of the sacrifices that was very common at that time in that region of the world were child sacrifices to a god named Molech. We actually find Molech named a couple of times in the Old Testament. And so as we begin this story and hear about God asking Abraham to sacrifice his son, this was something that the people in that region would have been familiar with. It would have been a story that they perhaps had heard um, through these other cultures as well and might have said, okay, that makes sense. But what we find that is different in this story is that at that last moment, God says, wait, stop. Do not raise your hand against the boy. I would not ask you to sacrifice your son. I would not ask you to sacrifice your son. As we look to our own Christian tradition and our own theologies of atonement, how we become right with God as Christian people, we have left much of that sacrifice theology behind us, but not entirely. Because while there are a number of different ways to understand how, how Jesus' life, death, and resurrection redeem the people of God, one of those ways is understanding Jesus as sacrifice. And we say that, we talk about Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. But Jesus doesn't represent just any sacrifice. Jesus represents the final sacrifice, the one that ends all of that, the sacrifice that is sufficient once for all. We see that in the letter to the Hebrews, that language that Christ was sacrificed once for all people. We hear echoes of this story of Abraham and Isaac when we look at other pieces of scripture in our New Testament. For instance, in Romans chapter 8, Paul writes about how God was willing not to withhold his own son, but to sacrifice him for us. We see that also in those famous words from the third chapter of John, where we say that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish but should have eternal life. And finally, we also see language of the Lamb. When we hear in John's Gospel, John the Baptist, saying, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. In John's Gospel, in fact, when we look at the timing of the crucifixion and the resurrection, they're a little different in John's Gospel than in the other Gospels. In the other Gospels, Jesus shares a Last Supper with his disciples that is the Passover meal. In John's Gospel, it's stated that Jesus was crucified at the moment that the lambs were being prepared for slaughter. That Jesus was the lamb. The lamb that would be the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. God may ask much of us in our lives. God asks us 
to be disciples, to follow, to be willing to go, to listen for that voice. And even though it might be hard, even though we might have to give up much, to be willing. But God, in this story, reminds us that even though, even though the cost of discipleship is great, God does not ask us to harm one another. I think this is an important lesson for the people of God, and it's one that too often we forget. Because sometimes in our search for righteousness, we do so much harm to one another. We forget that no matter our differences in theology or interpretation, that above all, we are called to love. To love God and to love one another as if it were ourselves. We serve a God of love. We serve a God that loves us so much that that lamb was provided for each of us, for you and for me, once for all, forever. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your word that tells the story of your people through the ages. We thank you that that story is also our story. We ask, O oh God, that you would help us to continue to listen for your voice, that you would empower us to follow you in faith, we thank you, God, for your provision that in difficult moments you will provide what is needed for the task ahead. As we continue forward in difficult times, we pray that you would give us what is needed to meet this moment for our good and the good of all your people. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is Lamb of God.
of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen.